Local 4 News starts now with a breaking news alert. And we start with breaking news that could impact tens of thousands of people in Michigan. The Michigan Unemployment Insurance Agency will stop trying to collect overpayments it made to people during the pandemic for now. That's according to a new court filing. It will begin next week, and it's unclear how long the suspension will last. Hundreds of thousands of people who got unemployment benefits during the pandemic received notices saying they were paid by accident and must pay the money back. Some have already gotten waivers. Our other top story is the weekend weather, and uh, you may see some snow flurries at any time if you're heading out to maybe do some shopping or already starting to celebrate the holidays. Forewarned meteorologist Brian Sherman starts us off tonight. Still some good ice skating weather, Brian. Oh, yeah, that's right, Jason and Kimberly. Definitely ice skating weather. Exact Track 40 radar looks a lot busier than it actually is outside. Most everyone's seeing some light flurries or a little bit of light snow shower activity through the afternoon. I'm fully excited. Expecting this to continue into the rest of the evening hours tonight. 34 right now here in Detroit, 33 Ann Arbor, 34 working into Port Huron, and 33 as you work into Adrian. Most of us running about 10 degrees colder than we were this time yesterday. That light snow pivoting right into the region, working through this afternoon and into this evening. So keep the heavy coats. You're going to need them heading throughout the rest of the day today. Temperatures slowly dropping below freezing by 10 o'clock tonight. And we're going to keep these snowflakes into the forecast through the entire weekend. I'll break down what you can expect in your complete forewarned forecast coming up in just a few minutes. Also a good time to download that forewarned weather app, Exact Track 4D, future track and weather alerts in the palm of your hands. You can find it in your favorite app store. Just search WDIV. All right, Brian, a family is searching for who shot a beloved father and grandfather because they say he has now taken a turn for the worse. Tony Lee was working at the Sweet Soul Bistro on Detroit's west side when he jumped in to break up a fight and got shot. Priya Man talked with his family today, and Priya is live at the restaurant with more. And Kim, this is where Tony was working at Sweet Soul Bistro when he was shot repeatedly trying to protect a female customer. He was rushed to Sinai Grace, which is just across the street. But unfortunately, his condition has continued to worsen. He's been since moved to another hospital. His family is now fearing the worst. My sister at one time was preparing for a possible funeral. Tony Lee is still fighting to survive, but remains in the hospital on a ventilator. It's not, it's not really good, and he's been struggling for a, quite a while. On November 6th, Tony was working at Sweet Soul Bistro on Detroit's west side when several customers got into a fight. Tony tried protecting a woman and was shot five times. I always try to help people, you know what I mean? Anybody in need, he always dare to try to help them out. So that's why I was so sad because he was just he didn't want the girl to be abused. Although there were witnesses, the gunman has not been arrested. This person who, you know, shot him is still at large and his family is just suffering. They are just devastated. And, you know, we really love Tony and his family needs support right now. While hospitalized with multiple gunshot wounds, Tony suffered a heart attack and his condition deteriorated. He has a lot of children and they are all there at the hospital as often as they can to support their father. As the family hopes for news of an arrest, medical bills are piling up. This is an innocent man here in the hospital right now suffering, you know, with his, and his family is in, in turmoil and um, you know, something needs to be done. And a second man was also shot here at Sweet Soul Bistro in this senseless shooting. Police are still looking for the gunman. There were plenty of witnesses here when that shooting happened. If you would like to help Tony's family, we've got information on clickondetroit.com. Reporting live from the west side, I'm Priya Mann, yeah. Local 4. Okay, Priya, thank you. New outrage tonight over an ongoing controversy at Michigan State University. Students, faculty, and donors are now calling for the release of a new report about why the well-liked head of the business school was ousted earlier this year. The school board brought in an outside law firm to investigate the resignation of Sanjay Gupta. Grant Herms live tonight for us, and Grant, they're calling for transparency here. Well, they are because the board actually got a look at that report from that outside investigation yesterday, but reportedly told lawyers not to present in writing, meaning there'd be no paper trail or documents for reporters or concerned Spartans to ask for. And today, those concerns from those Spartans were made loud and clear. Honesty, accountability, and leadership to do what's right. Three Christmas wishes for all of you from me. 
calls for transparency and answers about the ousting of former MSU School of Business Dean Sanjay Gupta. Any cover-up of all the facts by the board will only result in the continuation of unethical behavior by those in charge and greater harm to this university. How can you as board members pretend nothing is wrong? Why is it you don't strive for transparency and doing the right thing? Gupta was forced to resign in August after he failed to report a Title IX violation stemming from an inappropriate behavior by two other staff members during a faculty party last spring. Gupta had also expressed desires to become university president before leaving, and faculty members called his resignation mysterious, prompting an outside investigation. During their meeting Friday, the board did not address what was in that report and has made it impossible to access the records through public records. Still, interim president and Teresa Woodruff praised the university's work on Title IX protections. I am committed to building trust with our university communities around RVSM prevention work. And I want to thank MSU's people for continuing the important work of building a culture of support. Now, that alumni you heard from at the very beginning there who was asking for transparency, she also told trustees that she plans to boycott donating to the School of Business and warned the board that these trustee or rather these uh, alumni may also follow in her footsteps to say how serious they are about being able to see this report. Back to you. Yeah, and Grant, there's another report uh, that's expected about sexual misconduct on campus. Uh, can that can we expect that to be released soon? We can expect that to be released soon. Today, the interim president said that campus-wide survey, which was about sexual misconduct, harassment, Title IX, and how the university handles all mm -hmm. of those, should be released sometime next month. So we'll be waiting for that as well. Yeah, Back to you. We will be. All right, Grant, we appreciate it. All right, an update to breaking news we were following this time yesterday. We now know the identities of the two people killed in a crash after a chase. State police in Monroe were called to a home in Whiteford Township for domestic violence. They say David White Jr. from Belleville appeared drunk and was driving on neighbors' front lawns. He took off and police followed until he blew a stop sign and crashed into another car. A 52-year-old woman from Adrian was killed and so was White. State police still investigating that. Brittany Griner made her first statement today following her release from a Russian prison. Her first post made to Instagram shows a message and two photos showing her first steps back on U.S. soil and her first embrace with her wife, Sherelle. Griner thanked everyone who advocated for her release and committed to using her platform to help bring other unjustly detained Americans home, including Paul Whelan. Also in the post, Griner confirmed she plans on returning to the WNBA this season. Respiratory viruses are soaring. The White House now encouraging anyone heading to a holiday party or doing some shopping this weekend to take extra precautions. As Alice Barr reports from Washington, both the flu and COVID are big concerns. Jason, more than 100 million COVID cases have now been recorded in the U.S. and well over a million deaths. As health officials are urging precautions headed into another COVID winter. It is hard to miss the coughs and sneezes interrupting this holiday season. The flu hitting earlier and harder than any time in the past decade. The CDC releasing new data today showing flu activity is still high across the country, though cases appear to be declining in some areas. What is dropping nationally? RSV, the respiratory virus that hits little kids hard. It really looks like RSV has peaked and is on its way down. On the flip side, COVID cases, hospitalizations and deaths all climbing. The U.S. today surpassing 100 million recorded COVID cases, according to an NBC News tally. If people go out and got, get their flu shot, got their updated COVID shot, it's going to make an enormous difference. But new numbers from the CDC show that's just not happening, with only 14 percent of Americans up to date on COVID booster shots. Flu vaccine hmm. rates are woefully low. And nobody I see wants to wear a mask. I think everybody is just not in that mental state of health. They need to get there if we want to have a, a reasonable holiday season. 
The White House announcing new steps aimed at keeping COVID under control, including rebooting a program to ship out free at-home tests and opening more mobile vaccination sites. It all comes as pharmacies are struggling to keep cold and flu medications and even some antibiotics in stock. Our shelves in certain, at certain times have been completely empty of one product and then it comes back on and then it's empty of another product. The White House says manufacturers have increased supply to catch up up with the soaring demand as American families put a healthy holiday at the top of their wish list. New data from the Kaiser Family Foundation shows a growing number of parents opposed to vaccine requirements in schools. That as the Senate just passed a massive military policy bill that includes a direction to drop the COVID vaccine requirement for service members. In Washington, Alice Barr, Local 4. Now, coming up at 6, our Dr. Frank McGeorge is checking in with local doctors to see what's going around in each community here in Metro Detroit. A short time ago, President Biden signed legislation to fund the government for one more week. Congress passed a short-term extension with a government shutdown set to take effect at midnight. Now lawmakers are working on a full-year spending package before they head home for the holidays, and a new Congress is sworn in. Brian's back with our first look at the Christmas forecast. We can be sure it uh, won't look like this. <laughs> the oh. aftermath of a severe winter storm moving across the U.S. Plus, the city of Detroit marks a major milestone in an effort to remove blight from neighborhoods. And we're back on a Friday to help you plan any weekend driving. How to get around the major freeway closure that started this morning and will last into next week.